government of course has outlined a very consistent and concise policy on telecommunications that stretches back to the previous administration and this has been reinforced by this administration and it is to ensure that Barbados can have the easiest possible access universally to all uh, telecommunications technology uh, that can be introduced into Barbados. And of course, the revolution that we see in cellular technology in Barbados has been nothing short of spectacular. And I think tonight, we now carry this to an extreme level. And I want to say that with the introduction of 4G, uh, the government of Barbados is, of course, extremely happy that large amounts of data can now be moved with such speed as to help us to be able, not just from remote locations, but from almost any location, to be able to conduct our business and our affairs personally at a level that is less costly, that is more effective, that is clear, and of course that will add to our levels of competitiveness. So I want to say tonight congratulations to Digital. I hope that this is the beginning of, uh, or the continuation of a level of investment which we have seen in Barbados over the years and that the company will grow from strength to strength and contribute to Barbados. I do know that we do have before us an application for a wireless land service and I want to say that that is under active consideration of the government. I am not the Minister of Telecommunications but I look forward to the day when digital can participate in this aspect of the telecommunication. A wonderful company to be involved with. I am very, very proud to be honored with the post of a director, and um, I will do anything to promote the interest of it. And now they're launching 4G. I can just imagine all of you folks being able to, to move around the country with your iPads or your, or your, um, your smartphones, I, iPhones and so on and be able to surf the net and get and feed information down to yourself as fast as you could if you were connected to the other supplier's landline. <laughs> now I want to say, I want to say just one last thing to the, uh, to the ministers that are here. Digicel needs the license to put a level playing field in Barbados between the competition and themselves. They are capable of installing fixed lines throughout Barbados and I guarantee you that if they are uh, granted this, this uh, change in the legislation that people will not have to wait and beg to have a phone put in when they build a new house. The phones will be there within the ownership of this company in the, in the uh, person of uh, Dennis O'Brien is something that has taught me a great deal. They invited me recently to a director's meeting of all the companies all around the world in Ireland. And um, the general manager in Barbados, who uh, is standing right there, um, O'Brien as well, he, uh, it was the weekend that, that England was playing Ireland at rugby. And I need not say, how the Guinness was flowing. So by the time I got the director's meeting, I was weighing a, a, a good few pounds more with, of, of Guinness. Anyhow, what I was amazed to find out is that Mr. O'Brien, Dennis O'Brien, who is the nicest person you could ever want to meet. I would go to meetings here in Barbados with him and he would get up and pour me coffee. I, the humblest man you could ever want I tell you got into that meeting and he brought the, the, the boards of the digital companies all over the world before him one by one and they had to report on what they had done and what their success was and so on I have never come across a more ruthless individual <laughs> the, we were in a castle with a moat around it it was cold as the dickens the Jamaicans came in and, it, and they had overspent on their operation expenses. He told the guys, he said, let me tell you, depart from in here 
forthwith go and get into the moat and when you have figured out how to control your operating expenses you may come out of the moat not until then so this man was very uh, but in the uh, evening then nice as the donor was I mean your strategy is to go from being perceived as a mobile company to being a full ICT telco company so we have basically the mobile with our far the largest player in the Caribbean at this stage with 26 markets and the next stage is obviously the internet broadband. We've launched the WiMAX network, which somebody mentioned previously, which is another internet technology. Difference between a six point to point. We're launching 4G for internet. And the last part of this whole jigsaw is the fixed line, and we've applied for license for that. That coupled then with Nexar to do all our integration and, and for, to enable us to partner with companies like Cisco to fill in the last piece of the jigsaw. So that's when a company is going into a full ICT company. And for us, obviously, I mean, the, the market is such as actually, there's going to be so many people here in Barbados, and believe it or not, there's 110 mobile phones for every 100 ma when, men, women, and children on this island in this country. So market penetration, as we define it, has 110%, which is very high. So we're obviously not going to create more customers. We can take them from that other company that's busy describing those kind of things, which is important, I think, for Barbados when we launched here in 2004, and for our launch of 4G, is that for every 10% increase in mobile phone penetration equates to roughly a 1% increase in GDP. So all in all, health is absolutely quite important to all of us. And um, that's why, I suppose, some of the reasons why, um, why DigiSat is involved in this. I mean, Bibi have alluded to, um, the, to the, his, the history of, of DigiSat at the beginning and some mad Irish guy was coming in and annoying him in the very beginning. But, um, I would see myself following along in, in those areas and we take a lot of I suppose of the good that actually happened in Ireland and we're, we're trying to transform it into the Caribbean and obviously now on the actual converse we're trying to look at what went wrong in Ireland and trying to avoid doing it here in Barbados. But on the ICT sector is a very interesting one even in, our, in my own little economy Ireland at home. What actually happened over there was the whole property sector collapsed, the whole financial sector has collapsed. But the economy, the Celtic Tiger, as it was described, which was double-digit percentage growth for 15 years in a row, was actually built on the ICT sector to begin with. A lot of it was foreign direct investment, particularly from the state, and the rest was indigenous companies, that actually came after the foreign direct investment. And even if you look at Ireland today, we've had a 6% increase in exports this year, despite there being a recession, all built on the ICT business. So what I'm saying I suppose here is that for Barbados, for Barbados I think we can look at that model and sort of say yes ICT is a really sturdy business that can actually enable Barbados to grow I mean it's, because it is quite a wealthy business and the great thing about it is it's borderless and things like 4G, internet enable that globalization we can sell anywhere, we can sell to whatever we want to to eBay, we can market on Google or whatever we want to it's all about ICT for small island economies.